bunch of questions on me where you at your motivation guy that's right ladies and gentlemen i am back the one and only keith allen to encourage you to be great not only in this game but also in life i want you to stop judging yourself stop beating yourself up stop just looking and analyzing every negative thing about you and about your life and about how well you play the game i want you to start just looking at the positive things that you've just overcome so far and i'm telling you you're gonna find encouragement in that okay you know being a pro can be a tough job you know in fact reaching that level of skill it just takes so much time and dedication that by the end of it your play style is going to drastically change from how you used to play back when you first began you know just look at some of the greatest names in fortnite like mr savage or epic well i mean their gameplay shows them moving in ways you can't even imagine you know really it just seems inhuman how they flawlessly just weave in and out of the battlefield like how do they keep up with that kind of pace while placing builds and fighting enemies <laughs> good question well that's what we're going to be showing you guys today you know we're going to teach you how to master the art of movement so you can start working your way up to reaching that pro level skill you guys ready for this we'll get that bunch of crunch and let's get this going okay so if you want to be a good fortnite player then you need to be able to master your movement this is not rotation or even knowing how to use your controls this is about making yourself a harder opponent to pin down making you capable of editing without fumbling and most importantly it's about keeping the flow of the game going at a decent pace and so if you want to stop moving too often when making your decisions this can leave you exposed because of this you should start getting used to constantly moving during a match so try to minimize your stops right basically try doing mental parkour so that you're constantly thinking and making decisions as well the most common advice for anybody training to become a more fluid player is adjusting your sensitivities away from the default. This is great for aiming faster and building faster and overall having much faster movement. No, I don't mean that your speed is going from point A to point B is going to increase, but you know, rather movement in regards to your reaction time. If you hear gunshots coming from behind you, the last thing that you want to do is spend time turning around. This is why the right sensitivity will help you guys look around your area quicker and even retaliate faster than the normal settings. A good sensitivity is also good for builds. You know, the name of the game here, guys, is to get things done as quickly as possible so you don't need to just stumble or halt at any point. You want to keep moving, and that means making an edit quickly. And if you can make the right edit, then you have consistency, and that's going to ensure that you can make smart decisions most of the time. However, with the right sensitivity and practice time, you can cut down the time it takes to make any edit. So if you guys want to be quick and efficient, then one strategy is to practice aiming your crosshairs in between the lines when editing. To break it down, guys, whenever you pull out your editing tools, you're going to be presented with a three by three grid. Selecting the right combination will provide you with different results. So say you wanted to make a right hand peek. You're going to move your crosshairs and select the panels in the grid that you want to get rid of. And if you're a novice editor, then you might just try to move your crosshairs to the very middle of each one while selecting them. However, if you want to increase the speed, what you want to do is keep your crosshairs close to the line dividing each square. This is going to allow you to switch between two panels quicker. So rather than just going one by one, you can cut your editing time in half. So keep practicing this with your new sensitivities so you can just adjust to the speed at which your crosshairs pass over the editing space. You know, it's okay if you don't get it the first time. You know, most of it is muscle memory and timing. Okay, so thinking of improving your muscle memory and aiming skills, check out Aim Labs by clicking on the link below. This fully customizable experience gives you guys all the feedback and statistics that you need to visualize your performance and keep track of your progress. Aim Labs can help you achieve greatness in a variety of different games such as Fortnite, Valorant, and Rainbow Six Siege. So one of the things that you might have noticed when playing Fortnite is that players will often jump when they're just being fired at or when they're just firing in general. You know, jumping is a natural instinct in gaming since you want to avoid taking fire, right? You know, even if it hasn't always worked out for you before, you know, you can just perfect the skill and you can just make some smart moves that will not only you know help you win more fights but also allow you to take less damage in general all right so the worst thing that you can do in regards to movement is pick a direction and start just running without any variation at all it doesn't matter if you're far away or up close and personal with your opponent if you run in a straight line you become the most predictable player during the fight i'm telling you so your opponent is going to have an easy time just sniping you or just pumping you just with ease so why make it easy for them this is why it's always good to jump when you can right don't stop there though like rather than just move in a straight line don't forget Get to just bob and weave since this is going to make your opponent go through more effort to try to track your movements and so this means guys wasted ammo and just unpredictability which is definitely great for you can leave your opponent so vulnerable and so frustrated and you're going to be able to get them right and they're going to they're just going to be in a situation where they're just trying to reload and swap out weapons and 
easy target. Also, don't forget to use your crouches when you need to. You know, while the faster movement of standing upright can be very attractive to players, crouching is also really good for making yourself a smaller target to hit. Not only that, but crouching can also help just make your style just different, right? And make what you're doing uh, diversify so that people can't really hit you. So retakes are a great way to master more complex movement as well. Learning different retake techniques can be a great way of improving your timing as well as your overall awareness during a match. Every pro eventually needs to learn how to use retakes to overwhelm their enemies and come out as the victor of any fight. After all, like if you can't keep up with your opponent during a build battle, you're going to find yourself getting boxed up and cornered each time. I'm telling you right now from experience. But I will say this, like when you really break down the skills required to master these techniques, you're going to find yourself working on building faster, having a good sense of surroundings and really just making quick reactions. And so the perfect ingredients to make your movement more fluid so you don't end up just choking midway through a build battle is that you can just practice retakes on Raiders 464 maps and creative. But there you can expose yourself to a few scenarios that will come up and master consistently performing the techniques correctly. All right, guys, so if you work on your retakes, we are guaranteed that you're going to find yourself more capable of maneuvering the landscape weather part of the island. And uh, speaking of maneuvering, the best thing that you can do is learn how to reposition. Like gaining a tactical advantage can be the key to victory, but sometimes you're going to find yourself needing to change location at a moment's notice. You know, perhaps your opponent is just, you know, trying to box you in, or maybe you've taken some damage and you need to take a step back to heal up. Launch pads and shockwave launchers are great for just quickly moving around and just changing your position. The best part about them, guys, especially the shockwave launcher, is how fast you can put some distance between yourself and your opponent. And so if you find yourself boxed in and unable to edit your way out of your opponent's trap, the shockwave launcher will be able to break you out of that prison. So aim that launcher in the opposite direction that you want to be catapulted in and just, you know, just burst through the builds quickly, giving you guys some time to get some fresh air and just room to move around in. Also, don't forget to take advantage of items such as spicy fish and peppers, which can increase your speeds and make you even more unpredictable. You know, the worst thing that can happen to you all is that, you know, if you just have no idea where you're standing and, you know, you get in the confusion and you get hit and you get eliminated. This is why it's so important for you to always know your exits. This doesn't mean you know your POI. Like POI can be easy to navigate after a few games. And if you keep up with the current meta, you're going to know where to go for certain chests or just where to find certain items or vehicles. But what you can't predict is what kind of build battles are going to occur at any time, right? And when you and your opponent start just going at it and just trying to outbuild each other, it can be quite easy to forget which wall is yours and uh, where to go and when to leave. So the best tip that we can give you guys is to never waste your materials on unnecessary builds, right? Spamming builds will only create more clutter, which seems like it would just make you look like a more experienced builder. But in reality, all it does is create more work for you to really keep track of. Always build with purpose. If you need to gain the high ground, use your builds to get up there and just into the fight. If you need to keep moving during the end game, use walls and floors to create tunnels. There's more though. There are two different types of environments that can affect not only your builds, but your way out if you need to bail. Like when you start box fighting or build battling in the open, most likely the structures around you are all going to be destructible and open for retakes. But I will say this, if you find yourself trapped inside of a building, you need to keep in mind that the POI structures will most likely have more health than the builds and you might need more swings of the pickaxe or just some other way to bring it down. So really build while keeping your surroundings in check, all right? Not just player mate structures. For even more advice on practicing your aim, don't forget to click on the link below to visit Aim Lab. You know, one of the most important skills that you need to learn is how to jump and use your builds at the same time to move across, around, or even over structures. You know, building can help you guys obtain more fluent movement as you scale structures quickly and get the drop on your opponent. Combining the two, it's gonna allow you to not only move up higher, but drop down while avoiding fall damage. You know, one common technique is jumping and building underneath for you to gain elevation. This requires you to learn timing and practice those jumps while placing down a build. You may be thinking, if I want elevation, why not just build a ramp? Good question. But the answer is quite simple. You know, sometimes you want to be able to move to a different position, but prevent your opponents from following you up. Jumping and building underneath you can just put some distance between you and your enemy, giving them another obstacle to avoid while they try to chase you down. You know, this technique is also good for when both of you just end up in a box. Jumping up can put a barrier between you and your opponent during this close quarter situation, giving you an exit at the moment. But you crush saw me, that's gonna be it for today's video. Once again, this is your motivation guy, the one and only Keith Allen, the one who believes in you, the one is who is your number one fan. I'm here to encourage you and motivate you to be great in everything that you do. But you have to believe in yourself because if you don't believe in yourself, hey, who else will? If you guys like the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below and tell us about the things that you would be interested in learning more about so we can just keep these videos rolling out. Hey, spread the word to your friends, let them hear the motivation and what we got on this channel. We'll see you soon. Peace.